In this video, we will look at how to create a radar chart in PowerPoint. We will start by understanding what is a radar chart. We will look at its different elements. We will also look at different types of radar charts you can make in PowerPoint. Next, we will follow up with a couple of examples. Third, we will look at benefits of a radar chart. And finally, when not to use a radar chart. So let's start by understanding what is a radar chart. For that, let's just create one. Go to insert, click on chart, locate radar menu. Under radar option, we have three different types of charts. First one is with lines. The second one is the same chart except we have markers now. And third is with a fill shape. So I'm going to select this first option here and click OK. This is our default radar chart. I'm just going to make a few changes to the data sheet so it will be easier for us to understand this chart. Okay, so what is a radar chart? Here we have these items which are called variables in a radar chart. In columns we have categories. Here I have products as categories. Then we have a single axis which starts at the center here. To understand a radar chart, imagine a bunch of lines coming out from the center like spokes in a wheel. And at the end of each of these spokes, we have our data points. And when we connect these data points, we get our radar chart. So the further away a data point is from the center, the stronger it is. And the closer it is to the center, the weaker it is for that variable. Here we have five items, that's why this looks like a pentagon. If we increase the number of items, the number of sides will increase. So for six items, we will have a hexagon and so on. We can also have as many categories in columns as we want. Although after some point, it doesn't make sense to add more categories, which I'll explain later. Now that we have a basic understanding of the radar chart, let's look at different options PowerPoint gives us for customization. First, we can look at different customization options we have when we click on this plus sign in the top right corner. So we get an axis. We also get this chart title. We can enable data labels by checking this box. You will see the values have appeared now. We can also have these data labels as data callouts. If we want more options, we can click on more options. On the right hand side, we have these different label options that we can play around with. Let's say if I want to enable series name, we can do that. Although it's nice to have all these options, they really clutter our chart. So I'm just going to uncheck these boxes. Let's do that for this series two. Okay, much better. Next, I'm going to double click on my axis. On the right hand side, we have standard axis options. So the minimum value for the axis, maximum, then major and minor units. We can also choose our tick marks. So if I were to enable major type tick mark to let's say inside, it'll add these lines from the center towards the data points and the minor tick marks would be these tiny lines across these central lines. So we don't need that right now. Then we have this labels option, which is pretty much useless because no matter what you select here, nothing changes in the chart. Lastly, we have this number format. Right now, number is fine, but you could also have percentages here. Next, I'm going to bring my cursor on this line near this data point and then double click. We get one series option here. Herein, we can uncheck the category label. So this just gets rid of the category label. Next, we can also format our lines. So the line formatting options are pretty much standard. You can change their weight. You can change them from a straight line to a dashed line. We also get the option to change the marker types. But before we click on that, let's change our chart type from this line option to this second option. That's one with the markers. Then click OK. So we have the same chart except we have markers now. Let's double click on the markers. We get the same option as we saw before. So click on the marker option. Under marker options, we can pick a different marker if we want. So let's say, how about this circle? Let's increase the size to 10. We can also do that for our orange line. For the marker type, let's choose a triangle. Let's make this 10. There. Next, 
Let's look at the third chart type for a radar chart. So right click, click on change chart type, select this third option, which is the filled radar, click OK. The issue with this option is any values behind the top shape cannot be seen. So you might say, of course, then we need to make these shapes transparent. However, if I select my shape and go to shape fill, we don't get option to change the transparency of the shapes here. We just have the option for changing the line formatting and the marker options, but there is no shape fill option for us. However, PowerPoint does give us an option with transparent shapes under these chart styles. So if I click on the second option here, you can see that we have these transparent shapes now. There are a few more options here, but I think only this one and this one are transparent. So those are all the standard options we get. Next, let's look at a couple of real life examples. Let's say you want to compare two soccer players or for the rest of the world, two football players across these five skills, speed, passing, shooting, defense, and stamina. For a data like this, radar chart is an ideal choice. So let's go to insert, click on chart, click on radar chart, click OK. I'm going to select my data here, press Ctrl C and then paste my copied data in this data sheet by pressing Ctrl V. Let me get rid of the chart title. Now, just with a quick glance, we can see that player A is faster and is good at shooting while player B is good with defense, and stamina, and passing the ball. So just with this chart, you can quickly decide which player you want, depending on the position you are looking for. If you are looking for a defensive player, you should go with player B, but for a forward, player A might be a better choice. Let's look at an example from business. Imagine a company wants to evaluate three competitors across five categories. So these are our five metrics, quality, customer service, pricing, innovation, and market presence. For this kind of data too, radar chart can be a great choice. So let's create one. Okay, so just at a glance, we can quickly see who is good at what. So depending on our company strategy, we can decide to focus on specific competitors for those attributes. For example, if we want to improve product quality, this competitor C should be our benchmark. If we are looking at improving our innovation, we should be focusing on competitor A. So as you can see, radar charts are great at quick pattern recognition. Next, let's look at benefits of a radar chart. Radar charts are great when you have several related variables and you want to see them all at once. So they give us a full picture view of strengths and weaknesses across categories. The second advantage it has is it's quick to spot patterns. Like if something is strong overall, weak in one area, or if it's balanced, the shape of the chart itself tells a story without needing to read numbers carefully. If an organization, project, or person is strong in some areas but weaker in others, a radar chart makes those gaps obvious. So it's great for gap analysis, performance reviews, or strategic planning. Third, it engages the audience. So radar charts look visually interesting. So they are really good at grabbing attention. They stand out compared to the more common charts like bar charts or line charts. So they can be an interesting addition to your visualization toolkit. And the fourth benefit is it summarizes the data in a simple way. So when you have multiple factors but don't want to overwhelm your audience, a radar chart provides a single and compact summary. It's perfect for presentations, dashboards, or executive summaries. Let's also look at when not to use a radar chart. So the first reason is if we have too many variables, Radar chart is not a good option. So let me explain. Let's say this was our chart. Here you can see we have 10 variables. So anytime you have more than six to eight categories, the chart gets messy and hard to read. It's difficult to map the text with the data points clearly. It's easier for the ones that are closer to the border, but the ones that are inside, 
it's difficult. So ideally limit your variables here to six to eight options. Next, if we are comparing too many things. So here, although we have five variables here, you can see we have six products and this looks like a big mess. So my recommendation would be if you have more than, let's say four categories, you can either split this chart into separate charts or pick a different chart type. If you do want to use the radar chart, we can make this a small multiples chart. So we can split this chart into six different charts like this. This too can work. This is of course with a line with a shape fill. This would look like this. The next reason is if your variables are not related, maybe radar chart is not a good option. Radar charts work best when all the categories are somewhat related, like skills of a person or features of a product. If you have your variables like these, for example, we are comparing two locations and we are looking at different variables which have no connection to each other. So number of stores here while employee satisfaction here, then we have supply chain efficiency. So if the categories are totally random, a radar chart feels forced, so you can avoid it. For something like this, a table might be a better option, or you can make separate charts for each of these matrix. The fourth reason is when we are interested in precise number comparison. So let's say if we were comparing two customer executives on these five attributes, here the numbers really matter because we are going to judge the performance of both these executives. So for something like this, you might be better off picking a bar chart like this. The last reason is if your audience isn't familiar. If your audience is general public where you have people of different backgrounds, going with a tried and trusted option like a bar chart might be a better option. And that's it. I hope you found this useful. See you next time.